If you have a Nikon DSLR and you'd like to know a little more about SnapBridge, stay tuned. This video is for you. Similar to my other videos, I'm going to start off by level setting. It is cold, dark, and raining outside, so we're going to shoot this video inside and we should be in good shape because it's nice and warm in here. And as I do with my other videos, I do have a list of notes in front of me because they help to keep me on point, so I may reference those occasionally. And I'm also going to demo with this entry-level camera right here. This is the Nikon D3400. Keep in mind that everything I'm going to mention about SnapBridge, though, applies to the entire Nikon line because Nikon uses SnapBridge as their communication tool. Now I will make a few notes as to what applies to this particular camera right here uh, that may or may not apply to the other cameras in the Nikon line. So with that said, I'm going to go ahead and jump into the game plan. The game plan is this. I'm going to discuss what is SnapBridge and why do you want to use it. And then I'm going to show you how to install, set up, and use SnapBridge on a Android device like this right here. This is just a Samsung 5. Um, keeping in mind that you can also use iDevices as well. This just happens to be what I have. So I'm going to demo with this uh, Samsung device. And then I'm going to finish up with a few final thoughts. So with that said, let's go ahead and jump into what is SnapBridge. SnapBridge is Nikon's proprietary software to transfer images, movies, and to remotely control their DSLRs. Now, something to note about the Nikon D3400 right here is that SnapBridge is not permitted to remotely control this camera, nor can it transfer movies, and nor can it transfer large JPEGs. So you might be thinking, if you have this entry-level camera, what good is SnapBridge? Well, the one thing it can do is transfer uh, relatively small JPEGs from your camera back to your smart device and that's up to two megabytes. So it's just something to note and something to think about and pay attention to. Now, why would you want to use SnapBridge? The idea that Nikon had, I believe, is that if you're out shooting with your camera and you have your smart device nearby, that you could send your image from your camera to your smart device and it would allow you to send your images from your smart device to social media. You could share them with friends, things of that nature. I think that's the concept behind uh, Nikon's development of their SnapBridge technology. That's part of it anyway. And keeping in mind that you may want to remotely control the camera. Now again, as I mentioned, you cannot do that with the D3400, but if you do have something like a D500, um, you can do that. I've done it before and it is a nice feature if you do want to uh, remotely control the shutter release, for example. Um, and that type of thing. So that's pretty much the concept behind it. So how does it work? Well, this works via Bluetooth. Now, this is not the traditional Bluetooth. It uses Bluetooth Low Energy, BLE. Now, what, what that's all about is that they released this technology in 2011. Traditional Bluetooth always consumed a lot of power, and it's not something you would have uh, you'd want to leave on all the time because your batteries would drain very, very quick. Now with Bluetooth Low Energy, it's supposed to consume a lot less power and still give you the Bluetooth uh, capabilities. One thing I thought was interesting is that I believe the optimal maximum range of Bluetooth, believe it or not, is supposed to be 100 meters. Now, I highly doubt that. I've never, ever gotten anything close to that. But I think the concept there is if you're outside and you have full line of sight, there is no obstructions in the way, in ideal conditions, maybe you can get 100 meters. Again, I've never ever gotten that. I think a more, more practical uh, measurement is if you're inside and you have a lot of walls and obstacles around, you might get 30 feet or so of Bluetooth. It's still not bad, um, but just keep that in mind. You got to be relatively close uh, for the camera to connect. And this can automatically connect. I mean, you can set it up that way. I'll show you what I'm talking about in just a few. So, with all that said, let's go ahead and jump right in on how to set up and install SnapBridge. For demo purposes, I have the Samsung S5 on my left hand side, and on the right hand side I have the Nikon D3400. Now, keeping in mind that Nikon does create SnapBridge for the iOS, but again, uh, this is just what I have available. 
I've also tried um, other Samsung devices and uh, met similar results. So let's go ahead and just jump right in. I am in the um, I'm in the Play Store right now, and I just searched on SnapBridge, and you can see the icon right here. I'm going to go ahead and install it, and go ahead and accept here. And this app is 7.25 meg, so it's not very big, and the download and install should be pretty quick. You can see it's already done. I'm going to go ahead and hit open. I'm going to go ahead and accept the license agreement. SnapBridge opens and it's looking for the camera name. So we need to turn focus back to our camera. Now I'm going to go ahead and hit the menu button right here. And I want to be sure I'm in the icon, which is the setup menu. On the right hand side, I'm going to use the pad over here and just start going down. And I'm going to go all the way down to the option for this right here, connect to smart device. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK, which is the center button here on the pad. And this is going to launch SnapBridge. And it asks us if we want to s jump into the setup menu. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. And this is going to, um, it's going to send the camera name, which in this case is D3400 underscore number, number, number. You can see it appear on the left hand side over here. I'm going to go ahead and select it. And when I do, the um, smartphone is going to attempt to connect back to the camera. Now the camera is going to issue an authorization code. And there it is. So now the smartphone has it, and you'll see a checkbox here. Allow the D3400 to access your contacts and call history. I don't really see a need for that, so I'm not going to check that and just hit pair. Now at this point, we need to turn focus back to the camera and hit the OK, which again is the uh, center button on the pad here. And that's all there is. These two devices are now paired and connected. The camera lets us know that we should be uh, set up and ready to transfer images uh, from our camera back to our smart device. Now you can see here on the phone uh, the next prompt for us is Nikon asking us if we want to register for an ID. Now this gives us unlimited storage of thumbnails in their cloud environment. I'm not a real big fan of that. I'm just going to say sign up later. And this is a brief tutorial from Nikon. Uh, you can read through this if you want. Uh, it's just you know, four or five pages here. I'm going to go ahead and hit next. It talks about connect. I'm going to hit next. And the gallery. Camera. And get started. So let's go ahead and hit get started. The application is going to launch. And you can see right here by default, it's set to auto download to megapixels. Um, we have right here the uh, upload location is set to off. Synchronized clock is set to on. On this side over here, I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. And you can see right here, it says, do you want the location data to come from the phone uh, back to your uh, images? And I don't really want to do that. It's basically taking advantage of the GPS on your smart device. Now, would you like to sync the clock? I'm fine with that. I'm going to say yes. And from the camera perspective, we are all done and ready to go. So. With this in mind, what I'm going to do is, in front of me, I just have um, a couple of blankets, nothing special. I'm going to go ahead and take a photo here, and let's see what happens. Now, you can see here on the left-hand side, the image starts to transfer. And you can see how it's done. You see a little red dot there? Let's go ahead and click on this, and there's our image. Now, I'm going to go back, and there's something I want to note real quick, and that is... On the camera, um, I shoot in RAW, and so this is not able to transfer RAW images. So you need to shoot in JPEG. And if you come over here on the left-hand side, go up to the camera icon where it says Shooting Menu. On the right-hand side, come over here to Image Quality. Now, I have it set to Basic. Now, I like to leave my camera right here in RAW. You can also try RAW plus JPEG. Now I've noticed when I've tried to leverage the SnapBridge application in JPEG Fine that it seems to take a long time to transfer the image. And for the most part, it seems to fail. Let's go ahead and try it right now. So I'm going to go ahead and select Fine. Again, I'm going to take another photo. And keep an eye on the left-hand side. You'll see the icon starting to transfer back to the phone at this point. And this is where I've experienced issues in the past. Um, typically, the connection may fail. Um, I've, I've had various 
challenges with this application. And let's see what happens here. I'm going to click on the images here and you can see the note right here. It says, failed to download pictures. So um, this application has been very finicky and it looks like it continues to try and download, but yet nothing is happening. So providing that you are able to download the image onto your smart device, this will show up in your gallery and a gallery for um, Android devices. And at that point, you can, uh, you can send it uh, to any kind of social media you want. What are my final thoughts on SnapBridge? Not good. Now I come from a background of software development and I could tell when I started to test and implement this software that there were problems right out of the gate. Now I'm not sure what happened with Nikon. I don't know if it just skipped uh, UAT or user acceptance testing, but something seems to be amiss here. Now I had a lot of frustration and trials and tribulations during the demo just getting it to work. I got lucky to get one image to transfer, but more often than not, they failed. Now I've used SnapBridge with other Nikon cameras with varying degrees of success, but keeping in mind with the Nikon D3400, it only does one thing, and that is to transfer small JPEG images over to your cell phone. That's the primary purpose, so that you can take that image and quickly share it or get it to social media. Now, it compresses it down to such a degree that I'm not sure of the total benefit of leveraging SnapBridge to begin with. Now this is just my opinion, but if I'm out and about and I have my cell phone with me and I want to take a quick image, I'll probably just pull my cell phone out and snap it and share it. Now that's just me. If I want to take, say like a long exposure, or I really want to grab a good uh, depth of field or blur, then you know, I'm going to go ahead and snap it with my DSLR. I'm going to get back, post-process it, then share. Now that's just my opinion. If the application were flawless and I had no issues with it, maybe I'd be inclined to use it. The other thing is that this leverages Bluetooth technology. Now, it's supposed to be Bluetooth low energy. I come to find that it really depletes the battery regardless of whether it's LE or not. Um, now, it's just my experience, so I'm curious to know what your thoughts are. Give it a shot. Let me know below. And hopefully this video helped you out. If it did, give it a thumbs up. Now, I appreciate all the comments I've received over my previous videos and I anticipate releasing more tutorial how-to type videos for entry-level DSLR users or those who have used DSLRs for a while but maybe they just want to brush up. So if you haven't done so, subscribe to the channel. It's called The Real World. More often than not, I post videos about photography and technology but I'll also post them about things that happen in the real world such as homeownership and automobile maintenance. So until the next video, take care of yourself and be safe.